Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. According to the Tropical Weather Outlook from the U.S.-based National Hurricane Center, a broad area of low pressure located over the central tropical Atlantic, about 1,100 miles east of the Windward Islands, continues to produce a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Storms. Environmental conditions are expected to remain conducive for gradual development, and a tropical depression will likely form during the next days. While the system moves westward to west northwestward across the central and western tropical Atlantic, interests in the Lesser Antilles should monitor the progress of this system. A contingent from the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, paid a courtesy call on Deputy Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, at his office on Thursday, October 12, 2023. It's a pleasure for me to officially welcome Mr. Bolt to Nevis. I believe it is his first visit. We know that UNICEF, St. Kitts and Nevis would have benefited tremendously from UNICEF. And so we are indeed delighted that the representative, the regional representative is here. In my previous portfolios, I was the Minister of Social Development. And I know social development in particular would have benefited tremendously in terms of numerous of our programs from the intervention of UNICEF. And so UNICEF has always been an excellent partner in terms of our development programs, especially our social programs here in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so we especially welcome you, Mr. Bolt. UNICEF's regional representative is Peter Bolt. I'm really happy to be here today in Nevis uh, on my first official visit to St. Kitts and Nevis. And I'm really excited that on my first day here, I'll be able to cover both parts of this beautiful country. Mm -hmm. We still have very active programs across the Eastern Caribbean, including in the St. Kitts and Nevis, working on different aspects of improving the lives of the children. Uh, we know that across the region, and unfortunately St. Kitts and Nevis is not an exception, still one in three children live in poverty or are faced with poverty. And this, of course, has multiple implications for the children and for the development of children. Bolt noted that UNICEF has several ongoing programs and workshops in St. Kitts and Nevis. We're also working on safe schools, on improving the education, and also improving the engagement of young people in, in decision-taking, decisions that in, are related to their their day-to-day -day lives in their schools, in their communities, and where possible also in their society and as part of uh, the government decision-making processes. I just uh, went to uh, engage with a number of sixth form students and, um, and a really engaging discussion about I don't know, how they look at the world and are their challenges that they're facing. They are in sixth form, they are fantastic great uh, great uh, uh, group of, uh, of young people that learned a lot during their previous years of education. But they were very open in terms of sharing some of the challenges that I think we see across the region when it links to kind of mental health, the pressures of being a student, the pressure of achieving and, uh, and making sure that you get into the, the, the next school over, the pressures about learning the right things for you to be able to be a uh, 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 well participating citizen in societies to produ to contribute to the economy to contribute to your family and social life so i think there's a lot of uh, challenges that uh, that we are still working on all together i think we're in this together and minister of social empowerment the honorable janel nisbet who was also present expressed gratitude to bolt for the continued partnership between the nevis island administration and unicef also present during the meeting was UNICEF's Programme Director for St. Kitts and Nevis, Wendy Elliott. Delroy Prentice of the Nevis Sixth Form College and Sienna Johnson of the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College have each been presented with a laptop computer, kind donations of the Liamigua Oali Arts Foundation based in New York City. Prentice and Johnson were recommended for these gifts as a result of excellent educational achievements as well as their social involvement. The Honorable Dr. Terence Drew presented the two students with 
their gifts during a brief ceremony on October 12th at the Prime Minister's office. According to its official website, the Liamigua Owali Arts Foundation was created with the vision of nurturing qualified students coming from public primary schools and entering high school through the funding of educational scholarships or fellowships at private institutions on St. Kitts and Nevis. Premier of Nevis, the Honourable Mark Brantley, will host his next press conference on Tuesday, October 24th. The press conference will be held at the Cabinet Room on the second floor of the Social Security Building at Pinnis Estate. Premier Brantley will provide an update on matters pertaining to Nevis, and members of the press will have the opportunity to ask questions. The Premier's press conference will be broadcast live from 10 a.m. on Nevis Television, NTV Channel 99, Nevis TV Online.com, NTV Go App, Nevis Television Facebook page, and Nevis Newscast YouTube channel. Still to come. These institutions will not only remain steadfast in delivering crucial financial support, but will emerge as guiding lights of knowledge. The details after this break. As a responsible taxpayer, you help to finance free health care at all health centers on Nevis. Thank you for putting country above self. This message was brought to you by the Inland Revenue Department, Nevis. Be a responsible citizen. Welcome back. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honourable Dr. Terence Drew, says Credit Union Week is a moment to reflect on the values of solidarity, community and financial inclusion which the institutions uphold. In declaring the opening of Credit Union Week 2023, the Prime Minister urged members to embark on the 75th Credit Union Week with renewed vigour and determination. This year's theme digital transformation for financial inclusion arrives at the perfect moment, striking a chord of utmost relevance and urgency. In an era where technology has become an integral part of our daily lives, it is imperative that our financial institutions keep pace. This theme underlines the commitment of our credit unions to not only adapt to this digital age, but also to lead the way in ensuring that every member of our community has access to the tools and opportunities they need to thrive. It is imperative that we collaborate to devise innovative ways to accomplish this. The Prime Minister emphasized that the digital transformation of credit unions will not only streamline operations but also enhance accessibility and efficiency for all members. With the advent of online services, mobile banking, and digital lending platforms, we are breaking down barriers and reaching even more citizens, especially those in remote areas. In this government's vision of the future, credit unions will stand as trailblazers, boldly embracing innovation and redefining the landscape of financial services. These institutions will not only remain steadfast in delivering crucial financial support, but will emerge as guiding lights of knowledge, empowerment, and enduring economic prosperity for countless generations. Prime Minister Drew noted that the St. Kitts and Nevis National Cooperative League Limited has been the cornerstone of the nation's financial landscape. The league is comprised of St. Kitts Cooperative Credit Union, Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, the Police Cooperative Credit Union, and First Federal Cooperative Credit Union. The following is a notice from the Integrity Commission in Nevis. The Integrity Commission in Nevis wishes to remind the persons in public life that they must file their declaration of income, assets, and liabilities in accordance with Section 15 of Number 2 of 2013, Integrity in Public Life Ordinance 2013, and Number 5 of 2019, Integrity in Public Life Amendment Ordinance 2019. All declarants are required to submit their completed declaration forms and the relevant supporting documents in person at the Integrity Commission's office by 
by 2.30 p.m. on Friday, October 20th, 2023. Persons in public life include all persons in public life who made their last filing on or before February 3rd, 2023 or thereafter, and all chairpersons and managers who are no longer sitting members of statutory boards as of June 30th, 2022 and June 30th, 2023. All persons in public life who have resigned their posts from either the Nevis Island Administration or statutory bodies as of June 30th, 2022 and June 30th, 2023 are also required to file. And that's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.